Alright, so what we've done peeps, I always get a lot of questions and messages come through about what product I like to go through and fill with chip rock walls. Pretty much this is my one stop filler for anything that I've got to repair with chip rock is always uh, the corner cement. Uh, the reason why I like to use this product because it comes in powder form so I can control pretty much uh, how thickness uh, the product is but then as well you can control how fast it sets a lot of the time by mixing it up with a base coat or a corner cement the more you mix it the quicker it's going to set so if I sit here with this I've just mixed this up with water it's pretty clunky still that's why I, why I like it but I've only mixed it up a little bit and this could sit in the bucket potentially for an hour um, while I could use it other or I could mix it up for five minutes and then it will probably go off in five to ten minutes so that's one thing with this product as well the more you mix it the harder it's gonna and quicker it's gonna set so you can get this from pretty much I always like to use the corner cement you've got the base coat of the corner cement pretty much exactly um, the same product with the corner cement uh, I feel like it's got a bit better adhesion when I put it on. This thing, this stuff, you know, you throw it at the wall and you need a jackhammer to get it off. It's, it's a really awesome product. So I'm just going to go through now. Any walls like this, pretty much just go straight over with a base coat. There's not much else you can do with them. You can't tape them, you can't do anything with it. So we're just going to go through, apply a nice skim of coat on. We have got these blades. We did bring up a set of um, high blades. We just can't find them at the moment, so it doesn't really matter what blade you're gonna use. We just went down and got these from the hardware, so they're gonna do the job anyway. Could use a barbecue, scrap, uh, spatula, anything that's gonna fill the wall is gonna work. So we're just gonna go through anyways. I'm gonna um, start just laying this on. I usually do have a broader blade, which would always help with any surfaces like this, but this is the all we could get, so this is what we're gonna use. And it's always good as well, because. DIYs don't have the right equipment for the right job. So, you know, this is perfect for, you know, DIYs application as well. So we'll get it done. But yeah, you can get this from Bunnings, um, any hardware store pretty much, this um, sells. So, like I said, it's an awesome product. And then if you want to, instead of using it as a base coat, if you want to use it as a top coat, just as a skim, um, just thin it out a lot more and then pretty much it works as a top coat as well. It sands up really easy. Um, just be warned, when you fill something really deep with this product, it can become really hard to sand. So what I'll do, I'll show you a bit later on, but if I go to fill on the wall like this, so that's, that's pretty much it. This is gonna need two coats, so you don't wanna be going, putting it on like this, because right, it's going to take forever to dry, then you're going to have to spend time sanding it back, and then you're going to have to fill over it anyway. So what you're doing, you're creating a lot more work for what you need. So any patch that you know you're going to need to hit twice, make sure that it's flushly filled. You won't even have to sand that at all. As soon as that dries, you can make up another batch and just go straight over it. And a lot of the time, the product will set before the product in the bucket has. Uh, because it's obviously thin, so it will dry a lot quicker. Where in the bucket, you might be able to make two sets over the one patch with the one mix. So depending on the drying time that is. But see as well, just want to show you, is sometimes when you take off your jib rock wall, you've got your paper backing. Well, you always pretty much do. So any areas where it's lifting up like that, if you try to fill over it, it's going to create a bubble. So any areas like that, what I like to do, Grab it like that and just break it off. You can usually peel it away. So, see like this area here, you just peel it back like that. That way, uh, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, when you fill it, that's flush. You're not gonna have anything prying or poking out from the surface. So that's, um, that's pretty much what it comes down to filling as well. When you're filling anything like that, if you're gonna fill it like that, it's gonna make it a lot harder. So any cracks, joints, anything, what I like to do first, put it in a side, go like that the whole way. Anything like that, okay? Go sideways down it, so you're pushing it in that way. 
and then go over it like that. Remember, this is just a flush fill because we're gonna go over them again. So that's pretty much, you just wanna make sure that it is completely filled. You don't want anything coming out. So any areas like this, you know, just, just, just peel it back. Just check any areas you have you concerned about. And then, like I say, you just write to, just write to go straight over. So we're just gonna go through, get any like that. It is a pretty quick process. Um, being a base coat, you know, we just gotta throw it on, wipe it all off completely flush, and then wait for it to dry. Repeat the process. Uh, I'll show you how to apply the top coat and how to sand it, because a lot of people do, they fill it and then they over sand it. And then the, when they go to paint it, you can still see um, where the patch is. So you never want to over sand it, but you don't want to under sand it as well. So there's that fine medium uh, where you have to sand it to that right Pacific point. Otherwise, uh, it could be a whole waste of time or you're going to see a big lump hanging out of the wall when you're looking down the side of your walls. Just going through and I am applying my last coat, uh, skin coat, over my previous base coats that I've just done. You'll see from the following videos, I've already gone through and showed you some procedure on how I like to uh, prep the walls out. And then I've just put on a base coat before and here we are applying a top coat. So here I have it. I've just started to mix it up. This is a powder. This is still the exact same product that I used in my last video, which was the um, Jip Rock Corner Cement. Like I said, when you're using a top coat, you just make it a bit thinner. And it doesn't particularly have to say on the drum top coat or final final scheme or anything like that for it to for you to use that product. You can always use base coat just like a, a top coat. Um, it's it's all pretty much this is with all products, but this this product here, the powder jib rock corner cement, I I use it as a base coat and a top coat. I'll just thin it down a bit more. This isn't harmful or anything to your skin, so you don't have to worry about it. I find with a lot of things, um, doing it with your hands is a lot easier. It might be messier, but honestly, it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill you. Two, hands are nice and clean. I just did, I should have just, I should have waited because any size big hole, it will sort of puff out a little bit. So what I've done, you can see it hasn't completely 100% cured, but with a base coat as well, if you're filling anything deep like this, it's never gonna change to a white color. It will always stay like this. I get a lot of the time, oh, my base coat isn't dry yet. I can tell it's still wet. And I'm like, just feel it. It's probably dry. Just with the base coat, it dries with a darker color. So just as it's about to go off, I like to go through and see how I'm doing that? All I'm doing is just carving away any, any um, of the excess product that is protruding out. So that way we don't have to sand it. We can just give it a bit of a, um, sorry, you're cutting, you're cutting it off like that. So I like that any, any deep one, I just do that. So then I don't have to worry about going through at all and using a sander. You just grab your blade. Hey, you're knocking off any, any tops or anything like that when you're sanded. That's better. Use your like this. So there is my sanding for first coat. So now that allows me to start applying my second coat of base without anything that's coming out from the wall that's gonna uh, 
make make my filling rough. And just put it in. Let me just start going through. So that so that's that's pretty much how you want it. You can overfill it just a little bit like that, but you don't want you don't want to overfill your any of your patches. This, like right, so just spread it out. I do the exact same thing when I'm sort of even doing my top coat. I will go this way first, and then I can just smooth it out like that. So that's what I do. Any, any of the excess that you have on here, just wipe it off and just wipe it in, back into your bucket. And that way you're pretty much right to go through and just keep, keep hit, hitting them out. So that's, that's pretty much a rundown of how I like to apply my second coat. Very minimal sanding and at the end of the result that saves time and a lot of dust if you haven't got a Merca system like this. But yeah, I appreciate you all tuned. Just remember that when you're using your base coat as a top coat, just thin it down a bit more and it's a lot easier to work with. So, I hope this helps and it was a bit of um, information that, you know, not even just DIYs, painters can use out there, just anyone in general. That's what we're doing it for. We're not doing it for any other reason than to share the love of the paint game and the information and the things that I have picked up on uh, working with multiple crews, hundreds of different tradies um, in my 24 years experience. These are the sort of things that I've picked up on and try to refine to make my job easier and hopefully it makes it easier for all you peeps out there also. Thanks for watching.